for the amount of these machines, Lenovo's and Dell's that I put through my hands, I don't really have problems with many. All right, here we go. Today, it's a ThinkPad. I guess you got that idea because it says Think, ThinkPad. Box looks a little ripped up, but don't mind that. It's not an exciting box. So here we go. As always, I like to see the safety seal not open, because that way I know this is not a return. Open it on up, and it looks like what I thought was right. We just get right to the meat. There's no fancy inner box like we've seen in some of the other videos. Cool box and packaging. This is very much more straightforward. As a piece of foam on the top that we're gonna take out, cradles your machine, and there's basically the machine. You can see it there, right? We're next gonna just grab the machine. So we'll go ahead and take that inner box out. Maybe you tuned in late because you didn't subscribe to our channel. You don't like us, you don't follow us. So you know to tune in now early and like and follow and subscribe us. So it's supposed to be a good machine. I bought this machine for a client. It's an i7 processor. It's got 512 gig of hard drive. It's a uh, Lenovo's T14 Gen to computer that's the model number is it sealed yep look another safety seal you know me i love these safety seals this was ordered straight from lenovo it's thin it's light all right let's check this thing out here we are now we have uh, power which uses usb-c now these two ports here, I'm not exactly sure what they are. I'm gonna have to look into it. They definitely look like they're proprietary. Next we have the full size HDMI, that's cool. And we have USB 3. We have the eighth inch headset adapter, which gives you headset and microphone. On this side, we have another USB 3. This is just the fan. And this opening is for a Kensington lock. There's a little locking device you can buy that has a steel cable, has a little metal T that goes in here and turns it locks onto there you can strap it to your desk you can strap it to a piece of furniture so that way nobody can run off with it of course they could break it but they pretty much have to break it because that does go into metal on the inside as well so it's not just going to pull out and they're going to take the laptop anyway so um it's a little warm on the bottom but not obsessively there's a fan i can see if you're a person who works on your belly who lays on the couch or on their bed and puts it on their lap be careful because if you have a fan that is like this on the bottom you want to make sure that that is sitting either on a hard surface or there's something in the middle to lift it up because otherwise you restrict the airflow uh, it does have in the back as we said it comes through to here but this is where it's you know it's a secular thing so if one of them is blocked they can't really work in conjunction the way that they mean to it's a think pad now, I actually turned this on a minute ago, and I noticed that, yes, it's a Windows 11 machine. The thing I'm not really happy about on Windows 11 is that they've done this thing where you have to connect to a network and you have to sign in using a, a Microsoft account. I hate that. So there is a workaround that you can do. So the command that we need to type in here, Shift F10 opens up command prompt. I'm not gonna explain exactly what this is right now, but it allows you to interact with the operating system and the computer on a basic level. On a Mac, they would call it terminal. It's the same thing, really. So we're going to type O-O-B-E backslash bypass N-R-O, just like that. And we're going to hit enter. What happened? Oh, it's rebooting. That's what I'm talking about right there. By doing that, it's going to reboot, start the initial setup all over again. It's going to allow us to continue through without connecting to any Wi-Fi or any internet. It's going to let us sign into the computer without having to sign in with a Microsoft account. Now keep in mind, just like your Apple ID, a Microsoft account keeps it so that if you get on another computer, your settings are all going to transfer, your backups will be available to you, your pictures, just like you have iCloud. Cloud, all those things Microsoft has is part of that integration. So just like Apple, when you start the computer, they want you to sign into an Apple ID, but maybe I don't want to. Apple makes it easy to bypass it. You just literally skip it in the setup. Say, I don't want to do this right now. It says fine. And that's how Microsoft used to be. I don't know if you noticed before, but now I have the option. I don't have internet. So there you go. So now it's saying connect now to quickly get started on your device. 
And it's telling you access a full range of apps that can help you, blah, 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 because they want you to sign in with Microsoft. I still don't want to sign in with Microsoft. I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to say continue with limited setup. Okay, so here we go. Enter my name. Who's going to use this device? It's big man. It's not really. This isn't for me. As I said, I'm a consultant. I have lots of clients. This happens to be for a client. I'm not really going to set it up myself. I'm going to have one of my guys do it, but I want to show it to you. It's cool. That's another reason why. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us. Like us. One thing why I like to buy ThinkPads is because the warranty, they give you an option to buy an extended warranty. Many times I'm not that big of a fan of an extended warranty, but in cases like this, I am because this is going to be used for business. With these guys, I'm buying this I can get next business day warranty meaning if it doesn't work today they will be on site tomorrow at my place my work my house Starbucks anywhere you want them to and they'll fix your computer they'll bring parts so they can swap them and in most cases you'll be good that day it's a great program it's worth the hundred two hundred dollars extra that you might spend on a laptop like this to go ahead and get that extended warranty i'm a big fan of next business day warranties here we go we're gonna do no password a lot of these privacy settings i don't necessarily want to do there's advertising etc but for right now i'm just gonna leave them i can always go back in and change it afterwards for the first name this is the registration actually i'm gonna just hit skip and do that later as well but now here we go we're gonna get into windows 11 environment now one thing i forgot to do i have it set up here but just go ahead and plug it in while i'm doing that if you want to check this out i love this ruler and i'm going to tell you this machine is just shy of 13 inches and front to back we're looking at eight and three quarters so not bad i can't really measure the thickness too accurately right now because the lid is open but we're about half an inch for this side and if i was measuring this we're yeah about maybe just about a three sixteenths of an inch a quarter so my initial guess of three quarters is pretty dead on within i'd say about a sixteenth of an inch nice light machine i'm impressed with it i like it lenovo is a company that has had great machines and in my opinion some that aren't so great and this one so far it seems really nice there we are we we got it set up i'm gonna go ahead and connect this to my wi-fi here all right my main purpose i actually use edge the first thing i do is i go to chrome.com and i'm gonna download chrome because it's really my and look microsoft is like wait 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 microsoft edge it's the same thing as chrome okay fine i have it microsoft edge is much improved over internet explorer but i still don't prefer it so i went ahead and downloaded chrome i'm going to install chrome and i'm going to use chrome on this machine but i have clients that they like edge i have clients who use firefox the mozilla platform and they're all fine and what i was about to say is it's good to have more than one because there are websites that you might have trouble with first tip i have for you pop open another browser try edge if you're in chrome try edge if you're in Chrome, try Firefox. If you're in Edge, try Chrome. Vice versa, you get the picture, right? They don't all work exactly the same. The security settings in them is different. So just like I was having a problem getting a download of a free tool today, I opened up Edge, which I don't like and I don't really use, and boom, like that, it was there. So that's my another tip for you. We can do something simple like speed test, if we run a speed test, this is on Wi-Fi. As you can see, I'm getting a really nice Wi-Fi speed on this thing, right? I'm getting almost 600 megabit down and I'm getting almost 700 megabit up on a Wi-Fi connection. Oh my God, wow! That's awesome. I love that this machine can take advantage of the infrastructure that I have here because you can have a great infrastructure and if the computer can't handle it, it doesn't make any difference. It really makes no difference. So I love that part. There's another app that we like to use sometimes just to kind of see how the computer performs to do some, some performance testing and benchmarking. So we'll go ahead and do it just to see how it is. It's called Geekbench and it's Geekbench 6 right now. It's a free tool, probably three finger. Oh, look, three finger closed it and three fingers opened it back up. So that's kind of cool. I got minimize and maximize as a three finger swipe. I'm sure if I do two fingers one way, just opened a new 
tab. Yeah, it's opening tabs, I think. Three fingers is going to do something else. I'm going to be all in a lost place in a second here. Okay, let's run it. We finish and run it. Let's minimize this. Here comes this geek bench. I'm going to say later on the upgrade. I'm going to go here and say CPU, and it's going to run a benchmark test on this machine. It'll probably take, you know, a little bit, not too long, but we'll let it run through its course and then there'll be another test where we can uh, test the GPU, which is the graphical processor. And so we can tell the performance of the CPU, which is the central processing unit processor. And we can test how the performance of the graphics processor works, not only to display graphics, but sometimes computers offload some of the processing work, the graphics processor. So by having a little bit better graphics processor, not only will you get smooth, good video, but in certain cases, it might help in the case of games games and things like that, graphics, some of that gets offloaded to the graphics processor separately. So it helps to have a good, even you're like, well, I don't play games. I don't care about the graphics. You'll care about smoothness on movies and you'll care about performance potentially in some applications. Some machines take longer than others because it's testing the processor. If the processor can perform faster and better, then guess what? This is all going to happen faster. It's actually processing. It's running processes to see how long does it take to run this type of process? How long does it take to do this? How long does it take to do this? And it's going to come back and give us combined score and it's going to itemize the different processes that it tested to let us know because theoretically certain of those processes being better might make more of a difference to you for what you're trying to do than the overall processor performance is a tricky thing. You could have a super fast processor, but for certain things that it's going to do, you know, so-called lesser processor might still perform as well or even better for certain tasks. So that's why it goes through a whole bunch of different ones that it's telling you, oh, I'm going to test this process. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do this. And then the graphics one does the same thing. It does the different functions that a graphical a graphic processor would do. It tests those different functions too. Okay, here we are. It finished up. Single core processing is at 1886. Multi-core score is at 1466. From memory, I think it's pretty good. M processor max did outperform this. Uh, we ran it on my desktop computer, way outperformed this because it's a PC, but it definitely has an upgraded processor and graphics card. But this is a pretty respectable score. This is pretty good. This is not like bottom of the barrel kind of stuff. So here we are. It tells you everything you've got, your operating system, your model, your motherboard, what type of processor you have. And then it even, look, it even gives you a link here. And these are benchmarks of this processor. So this is the processor benchmark score. So it's not that surprising what we got based on that. Tells you the frequency. It's a four core processor. So I believe this is an 11th generation processor. So there are more modern processors. There's processors with more cores. There's going to be machines that are going to be spec wise better than this. But this machine feels pretty snappy. And I think that it would be just fine for the most of the stuff we're trying to do. Here's what I was talking about. These are the single process benchmarks of individual tests that it ran. And you can see, okay, this is a little bit better. This is a little bit better. So multi-core performance. So it's testing all these things. And as you can see in text processing, it's very low, but in asset compression, it's succeeding. It's very good. So that's why one computer specs might look the same, but they're not all going to perform the same. They're all going to perform slightly different. So yeah, this is, I would say, middle of the road for a new computer. It's not the latest processor, so I don't really expect it to be that superior. It's just got an Intel Iris graphics, which is an integrated into the, into the motherboard. It's nothing special. It's nothing you know, that's uh, supposed to be any kind of like great performance. It's it's a straight ahead, middle of the road processor. Let's go ahead and when we talk about that too, let's run the GPU benchmark and see, because that's what I started to talk about. It's an integrated Iris 
graphics processor. It's not anything that anybody's bragging. They do put a sticker, so I guess they're kind of bragging. But it's not like if you had a GeForce, a GTX, or, or any of the other upgraded, more dedicated RAM, those type of things. This is not meant for gaming, although you could do some gaming on it. It's totally capable, but it's not really what this machine is made for. This comes from the business division. This is made to run applications, do word processing, surf the internet, and some of the other stuff you could run i'm sure photoshop probably premiere edit a little video on this would be fine but it's not going to be that high performance and if you're rendering video and those kind of things that uses the gpu and this thing will do it but you might have to go to sleep and wake up tomorrow and finish so yeah, I would say good one. This uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T14S, good solid machine. Anxious to see it in operation. Uh, like I said, Lenovo, I think typically makes a nice machine. I think companies like Lenovo and Dell, they go through phases where some of their machines are a little bit eh. They're not that great, but I would say for the most part, they've been putting out some real good solid machines. And the thing I really love about both of those companies is that with their premier warranties, which are not that expensive, you're getting that next business day service. I had a desktop that they serviced three times. They replaced it with a machine that was better It had better specs. It had better components. It was a better machine. They replaced it. So I like companies that stand behind their product, even though it might be a hassle, I don't find to have to go through that that often for the amount of these machines Lenovo's and Dell's that I put through my hands I don't really have problems with many I have problems with some and they're always there to stand behind their stuff so I give this machine I like it I'm totally satisfied with it I got a good deal on it it was just over a thousand dollars normally it's a couple thousand dollars um I got it through Lenovo it took them only like maybe four or five days for it to arrive at the door and now we're going to get all the apps you know set up and get this thing running and um you know like we always say please subscribe to our channel like us follow us we'll do lots more reviews like this one and all kind of stuff it's called big man's world of wonders because we do all kind of things computers we do do-it-yourself stuff we like pcs we like mac we do a little bit of everything and we like everything everything has its place in this world so that's it for tonight go get yourself a lenovo t14s we appreciate you we'll see you next week more exciting episodes to come don't you forget about us